if you're practicing mindfulness, then experiences should be more intense and more vivid. Life should be more bright. It also means being aware of the unpleasant as much as the pleasant. So I'm not promising that your day will be absolutely pleasant. But the day should be sharper. If you do things with mindfulness, you're interrupting those story arcs. I have this image of going camping and you're sitting there by the fire and there are a few things as utterly absorbing as a, as a fire, just sitting there staring into a fire. It's better than TV. <laughs> and then in the campsite while you're sitting there absorbed in the fire, there's also your dog. And your dog leaps up and starts yapping. And you look over at what your dog is barking at, and it's a leaf. And to the dog, wow, it's a leaf. <laughs> it moved. And you're like, yeah, yeah, let me look into the fire. <laughs> so get your fascination back with the small things. A leaf is fantastic. When you look at it, when you're mindful, when you're not lost in your stories and your thinking and absorbed in your activity, you walk around most cities, but I think Bangkok is much, much, much worse than Australia. People staring into their phones as they're walking, and just absorbed in, in what I don't know. I, I don't know what they're doing bumping into people and one of the videos I put up on YouTube was the, the original clip is on YouTube somewhere and they did an experiment and the question is that people who are absorbed in their phones as they're walking a, across a square outside a university and there's a disparity what they think they've done is walked in a straight line and they're completely unaware like how close they are to bumping into people how they're constantly having to zigzag and move around so mm -hmm. their perception of their experience is very different to the actual experience and for some of these people, when they're shown a video of themselves walking across the square, they think they just went in a straight line like this. But they're quite amazed at what actually went on. To test how aware people were of their surroundings, what the experimenters did was they put a clown on a unicycle and had this clown on a unicycle go right in front of the people on their phone. And most of the people never saw the clown on a unicycle. <laughs> so if you want to look up the research, just put clown on unicycle in YouTube and you can see uh, experiments and the conclusions that the psychologists were coming up with. <laughs> When they show people the videos, they can't believe that they didn't see a clown on a unicycle go right in front of them. And often they'd even dodge out the way of, the, of this clown on a unicycle, but never see it. Interesting. So, if you're practicing mindfulness, we, these story arcs, these things that we... actions or thinking that we get absorbed into we want to break them up. And when you break them up, you become fascinated with the small things. A leaf, wow! <laughs> One of the best notes I ever received in a meditation retreat 
somebody wrote me this note and said, my whole life I've absolutely detested carrots. And this retreat is so boring, the only thing I had to look forward to was the food. <laughs> and I couldn't believe it, somebody would put sliced carrots in everything. <laughs> I was so unhappy. And then I thought, why am I creating suffering around a stupid little orange vegetable? <laughs> so I looked at this little thing and I speared it with my fork and I popped it into my mouth and I chewed it. And oh my God, I've never had such a wonderful experience. <laughs> if I have nothing else to thank you for, I thank you for this wonderful, enlightening experience of how exquisitely beautiful carrots are. <laughs> Something like that. <laughs> so, mindfulness then, the taking joy, getting that animal-like joy in just the small experiences, one after the other, after the other, being willing to break up the long stories that we get involved in. The natural tendency of a human being is to stay away from feeling themselves. For most people, <clears throat> kind of happiness or is getting absorbed in something completely. That's why people like TV. Some research done on people watching TV turns out that people who sit and watch TV all day, and they're paid to as part of the experiment, burn fewer calories than people who are stuck in a room and do nothing. Doing nothing, you start to look around, you start to invent things, you start to get more active. With TV, you just... <laughs> you just are. They also had these students watch TV all day. They were paid a fee to do the experiment. I wish somebody had paid me to watch TV all day when I, I could have done that. And then they were asked periodically what they'd been watching four hours previously and they couldn't remember. And most people think that they would be able to remember, but actually the experiment showed that pretty much no one can even remember. Why? Because we like to not feel ourselves. We like to not be engaged. We like to be unconscious. Think of a cat, you know. Cats can spend 22 hours a day sleeping. And, you know, as animals, we like to not be aware of ourselves. And so when the attention returns to yourself, sometimes it can be somewhat uncomfortable. You know, you're not accustomed to feeling yourself. You're not accustomed to that feeling of life. So, bear this in mind and make it into something that's joyous. Meditation should be joyous. Beautiful in the beginning, beautiful in the middle, and beautiful in the end. It might not always be pleasant. For example, having children is that a good experience or a bad experience? It's a joyous experience. It might not always be pleasant. <laughs> Your children might cause you heartache and anguish and disappointment and pain. But nonetheless, having children is a joyous experience, people tell me. I'm a little unconvinced, but... <laughs> So you make it into something joyous, you make it into something worthwhile. Same with the meditation, that it may not always be comfortable. Yes, all human beings, we like to be unaware of ourselves and lost and absorbed in something. If I asked you, what's the difference between a good movie and a bad movie? Is it the actor? Is it an action, a thriller, a romantic comedy? Is it, you know, the people who are in the film? Is that what makes a good movie or not? 
the only one criteria of what you consider a good movie or a bad movie is did it absorb you? And while you're in a cinema watching a film, if it doesn't absorb you, suddenly you become aware of your surroundings. The person in front of you keeps scratching, the one behind you is eating popcorn with their mouth open. I hate that. <laughs> people chewing gum is bad enough, but people who chew gum with their mouth open, I... I chips. Chips. Crackle. Yeah, the crisps, we call them. But yeah, I came back from uh, Chonburi, a couple of hours from Bangkok, t in a taxi. And every single meter of the entire journey, he chewed gum with his mouth open. <laughs> Sometimes I tell people, I get, um, I can get quite rude sometimes. <laughs> Making the meditation into something joyous. Most people like to be absorbed in something, in a phone, in a line of thinking in sleeping, in eating, and the eyes get glazed over, and shh. And they basically only resurface for air, like once in a while, and then they oh, look around, and then they think something else, oh, I'll go and do this, and off in another line of action. So start to take note of those times when you resurface, when you come up for air, when your mindfulness returns and you, you look around. And usually this is the time when you make a decision to do an action. So your awareness comes back, you look around and, oh, right, I'll go make a cup of tea. And now you're back in another line of action. And your mind has already gone through the door, started making the cup of tea before you've even got to your feet yet. On practice, we sometimes do in the temples is opening doors. And every time you go to a door, stop and have five seconds before the door. And you see how your mind has already gone through the door and is lost in this action. Stop. Wow, look at that door handle. <laughs> <laughs> see how often you come up for air, that mindfulness that returns. And that's the quality we're trying to reawaken. And the more you learn to trust in that experience, the less you get caught up in the things around you in the world, but the more vividly you experience things. You experience the, that leaf like the dog experienced the leaf again. You experience that bite of toast the way that in your first ever bite of toast. You experience things in a, in a fresh way. You find that piece of carrot that you thought you hated. The thing about the movies, so a good movie is one that absorbs you. If you get caught up in the story, you don't feel yourself. You're not aware of your own body, uncomfortable in this little seat, or the smells going on around you, or the activities, or the crunching. You're just caught up with that film, that movie. And for some people, they like thrillers, and some people, they like action movies. For me, action movies leave me just completely bored stiff. But, you know, I, I see sometimes the kids are watching like this. They're completely absorbed in the movie. Well, that's what I like too. I like to be completely absorbed in the story. So we're practicing this interrupting of the story arcs getting back to experience little things moment by moment by moment. An hour can start to stretch into a very long time, but make it a beautiful hour. So remember to enjoy your practice, enjoy your meditation. Remember that feeling yourself and returning the consciousness, returning to your own experience can be somewhat uncomfortable until you get used to it, but you can make it into something beautiful. <laughs>